Okay, time for some hints and extras for the Coding with Scratch maze game. By now you should have your game working and be able to run around in it. But let's look at some of the other things that we can do and examine where people have problems. I didn't finish this script, the forever loop, that we said was going to check to see if the player had won the game or if they had run out of time. Let me just add a couple of things on this. If you get to the end spot, you want to say something about it, like, good job, or I made it. Something like that. And then once you get to the end of the first maze, you want to start the second maze, and that's the real challenge here. So there's my message. So when you get to the end of the first maze, we want to broadcast another message saying it's time to do level 2. So I've got a broadcast message here saying start level 2. And so that will happen as soon as I get to the end of the first level. On the other hand, if the timer runs out, then I need to say something different, like too late. All right. Now what should happen when the timer runs out? Well, there's many things to do, but we could always just start over. You could broadcast a start command again. Now this is a tricky thing because we're already in the start script, and we're broadcasting start. So in order for us to avoid trouble, I need to stop this version of the script so I can do a new one. So I'm going to say stop this script, since it's a good idea to stop this script when I finish it. So I want to put stop this script in when they get to the end of the maze or when the timer runs out. Then players can start again with either the same maze or the new maze. When the second maze comes up, we have to make sure we change our backdrops. And that's going to be in the stage. I showed this last time when I started level 2. It switches to backdrop maze 2. And with the start spot and the end spot, they have to go to the right locations for each of them. Finally, with the runner, I've got the script here for where they can start, and I'll need to duplicate this entire script. So let me just go ahead and right click and duplicate that. Okay, I've duplicated the whole script. So what I change is instead of when I receive start, I want to receive start level 2. Just about the entire script is exactly the same, but if the timer runs out this time, we should go back to start level 2 again. See? If players get to the end of level 2, then we're going to have to do something different. We could broadcast a different kind of message, something like, congratulations, you finished, or, oh, whatever you want to do. This is up to you, but it's just one of those neat little congratulatory things you can do while you're making your games. Okay, that will get you through all the required elements of the maze challenge. Let's talk about some of the extra things you could add. One of the things that people like to do with this is to use an animated character. Now, you may have seen that I actually have a lot of different costumes that animate the runner. I'll show you how to do this in a minute, but let's look at how we make it look like it's animated. Right now you don't see that because it never switches costumes, but I've got this forever loop right here, so all I need to do is put in the next costume in the forever loop. We used this back in our chasing game. As you can see, he's changing his costume very fast. That's probably a bit too fast. So let's stick a wait in there. 0.2 seconds should be good for the costume changes. And now you can see he's animated again. It's pretty cool stuff. I always like doing that. Okay, let's talk about how you get costumes because they're not built into Scratch and we have to import these. There's a few ways to get animated sprites into Scratch. One of them is to find an animated GIF of a character and port it into Scratch. It will create the costumes from each of the frames of the animation. But I find there's not a lot of great GIFs out there, so there's another way to do this, which is to use something called a sprite sheet. Fortunately, there are lots of sprite sheets. I'm going to put sprite sheet runner in here and see what we find. 
Sprite sheets are sheets people have created of their favorite characters doing different things for the purpose of animating sprites in game design. And these are just the kind of examples that you get when you do a search for a sprite sheet. Out of all of these many, many ones we have listed. Okay. You see the various examples they have are pretty great. We're going to right click on this one though and select save image as and you can save it to your hard drive. Uh, this one is going to save as a JPEG image. So I'll just go ahead and name that and it downloads. Alright. Okay, so now that I've got what I need, I go back to Scratch and I create a new sprite. I'll upload the sprite from a file here. I've got my runner and I upload that. So it upload the sprite sheet as one picture. Go into costumes and you can see all the costumes are one picture. What I need to do here is separate each of these frames into a single unique costume. So I'll do a right click and I'll duplicate. How many are there? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'll need two more, and the key here is that I'm just going to delete all but one of each of these. Let's scroll over. Can I get everybody there? No, not quite. We just want one image for each, right? So now I'm left with one image. I'm just going to go through and cut down to one image there for each of these sprites that I uploaded. Now there's two more things I need to do. I want to take the white background off and then I want to tell the computer where the center is for my sprite. Now to take the white background off there's a great feature I use called the paint bucket and I fill it with this color here with the red slash that's filling with transparency. I fill it like that and it takes away most of the color. There's a bit of leftover. I think there's some slightly different colored pixels there. And I need to delete those if I can see them. So then you need to tell the computer where the center of this character is. And that's the key to making him look like he's running. So I'll click on the right corner of the drawing program. Those crosshairs there. And then I click on Okay, right there. Oh, I lost him. Let's find him again. There we go. So I click right there. And pick a place in the object that you can make for the same for each of the frames. So I'm going to go into frame 2. And again, I use the selection tool and select the others. Get rid of those. Uh, make sure I've got everybody there. Now I'll use my paint bucket. Oh, I'm still deleting things. Yeah, there we go. And so now I'm going to use my paint bucket. And I have to make sure I set the center in about the same spot. So I put it right about on his neckline. There, that's a good spot for it. Uh, looks like I didn't delete everything. I need to delete these guys over here. Okay, so now you see I've got runner 1 and runner 2, so I just need to repeat the process and make sure I set the center each time. Otherwise, it won't look quite right. There's a lot of things you can do with your game here. Another thing people like to do instead of a timer is create a variable for the player's health and have that variable decrease if they take too long or increase if they find some sort of elixir along the way. All sorts of bonuses and things like that. In order to create something like a health bar, you'll need to create a variable. Variables are located under data. and I've created a variable here. If you don't have any variables, there won't be any of these blocks yet, but once you say make a variable, you could say health, and you want this to be for the sprite only, for the runner, and then you say okay. All right, just select that one, hit okay, 
Then you get things where you can see the health on the screen, and you can turn that on and off. You can set the health bar status at the beginning, and you can change it as they run through. So that's some stuff that could definitely help your maze game out. Alright, so take those ideas and impress us at the show and tell on Friday. Thank <laughs> you.